Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we would be continuing chapter 7 which is functions from your class 11th NCRT computer science with Python book. Okay. In last video, we started with the chapter and we covered what are functions, why do we need functions, what are the benefits of using functions in a program and we also studied what are the two types of functions, the user defined functions and the built in functions. So in this video, we would be starting about we would be studying about what are user defined functions and how do you define them you how do you use them in your python program so as we have studied in previous video also a user defined program is the pro is sorry a user defined function is a function whose definition is provided or written by the user explicitly okay the definition of built in functions is already present in python libraries but in contrast to those functions, a user defined function must be uh, elaborately or clearly defined by the user who wants to use that function in its program, in his or her program. Okay. So to create a user defined function, we need two things, the function header and the function body. Now the function header is a single line and the function body may consist of one or more than one uh, statement or lines okay python statement now first we'll be talking about the function header so this is a function header a function header basically consists of a keyword which is def def is the short of define okay now this is a keyword so you cannot change it you have to write as it is it is predefined you cannot write any other keyword or any other starting word instead of this keyword okay so this particular keyword instructs the python interpreter that after this particular keyword whatever you will be uh, you will be finding in the line ahead is the function header because def basically tells that a function is being defined okay now followed by this particular keyword is the name of the function now the name of the function is given by the user it must follow uh, the naming conventions of the python programming language and it is given by the user so it is of user's choice it preferably it should not be of uh, um, it should not match with any of the existing keywords that are already defined in the python programming language okay so uh, first you write the def keyword then you give a name to your function you can call it whatever you want to but uh, it is preferred that you give an explainable name uh, such that anybody who sees the name of the function is able to understand what the function is doing okay so if it if the uh, function is calculating the sum of two numbers then you can give it the name add two numbers or add or add numbers okay something like that now uh, after the function name is immediately following a round bracket pair okay and after the round bracket there must be a colon so you are seeing this in the next line but actually it immediately follows the round brackets now the round brackets are compulsory however the uh, parameters written inside the round brackets are optional okay now what are parameters parameters are the values that are passed to the uh, function whenever the function is called or invoked and these are the values that are used inside the function that are either used to calculate other values they are used to display these values the function uses the parameter values in some way or the other okay they it can modify it it can either use it for some other calculation so these are the values that are that we pass during the function invocation i will be talking more in detail about parameters in the coming lectures but as of now you must understand that the function header consists of the keyword def then it is followed by the function name then there is a compulsory set of round brackets and there is a compulsory colon that must be written after the round brackets inside the round brackets you may or may not include the 
parameters okay how do you define the parameters or how do you write a set of parameters one or more parameters are allowed i'll let you know that also as we proceed further in the video okay so now once you have written the function header you have to write the function body now in the function body you can write a single statement or more than one statement but all those statements have to be indented so in languages programming languages like c++ you write uh, the function definition or the uh, function statements inside curly brackets right but there is no such curly bracket uh, a rule that has to be followed in the python programming language therefore what you have to do you have to somehow tell the python interpreter that the following statements are a part of the function definition and the python interpreter must segregate or it must be able to differentiate what statements are a part of the function definition and at what point the function definition has ended okay so how do you do that you do that by providing some indentation at the beginning of these statements now what is an indentation indentation is a single space or a set of space or tab characters okay so uh, the at the indentation level uh, the indentation level at which you are defining the function that means the level at which you are writing the function header then uh, to write the statements inside that function you need to go to the next indentation level okay so there must be uh, the function body must be indented at one additional indentation level compared to the function header okay and as soon as you complete the function definition all the statements would be present at the same indentation level and as soon as you finish the function definition the following program statements are again written from the same indentation level that uh, was present just before the function definition okay so this will again become clear to you as we move ahead in the chapters and in this video so uh, the last point for defining a user defined function is that the user defined function may contain a return statement or it may not contain that statement now a return statement consists of a keyword which is return and it then is followed by a single value or a sequence or a set of values that you want to send outside the function or return to the place where from where the function was called okay again this is optional i'll uh, let you know in the further videos when do we write a return statement where it is necessary and where it is not okay so basically we have seen the important points of defining a user defined function are a function header should always end with a colon okay so the uh, ending of a function header should always be a colon then the function name should be unique that means you cannot write multiple functions having the same name in a single program you must define them uniquely uh, the function header should be unique okay and the function names should follow the conventions that are uh, provided by python for naming the identifiers okay you cannot start a function name with a digit underscore is allowed as the first character but no other special characters are allowed so all those uh, naming conventions have to be followed or rather must be followed while giving name to your function okay last only the indented statements are considered to be a part of the function body okay so the statements that do not follow the uh, that are present at the same indentation level as the function header are not considered a part of the function definition okay so we'll see how to indent a function and how to write the statements outside the function but before that we'll see how we can execute a user defined function so you must remember from the previous video that i mentioned that this part is only defining a function it is just telling the interpreter that if the function is called then you have to in, uh, execute these set of instructions but 
writing this def def statement and the set of instructions inside the def statement will not perform any uh, task it will not execute any of these statements unless and until the function is called or invoked okay then only the function will be executed so these uh, function statements are executed once the function is called or invoked at any point in the program if there is no calling statement for a particular function then its functionality though that functionality has been defined by the programmer that functionality will never be executed or implemented okay those statements will never be run by the python interpreter okay so a function should be called or invoked to execute its functionality and how do we invoke the function we write the name of the function that we had given during its definition followed by the round parenthesis or round brackets and within the brackets you may write the arguments if you have uh, passed the parameters or you may not write any arguments in case no parameters were passed during the function definition okay so whenever a function call is encountered by a python interpreter the flow of control is transferred from this particular statement to the place where the function was defined all those statements inside the function are executed and then the uh, flow of control or flow of execution returns to the statement immediately following the function call okay so now i'm just quickly going through few uh, examples of how to write and call a function okay so uh, there is one question that write a function to add two numbers so what i have done is i have used the keyword def okay so one most important point is before calling any function or invoking any function you must write its function definition so the python interpreter should have read the function definition before it has encountered the function call in your program then only it will be able to run the function correctly otherwise an error would be encountered okay so more on this later but before that we'll be seeing these three examples so here i have to add two numbers so i have uh, defined the function the name of my function is addition and the round brackets i have specified with a necessary colon i have not provided or passed any parameters so the round brackets are empty now since the indentation level of this def statement that means the function header is this i have left one uh, one tab space in uh, before writing any of the function statement so all the function statements are indented at the next tab level okay i have left an equal amount of space before writing any of this functions present inside the function okay any of the statements present inside the function so what are the statements uh, the statements that i have written are uh, i have defined two input statements num1 equal to input enter the first number and num2 input enter the second number so num1 and num2 will store the two numbers and then i am calculating the result that is the sum of the two numbers and i am printing the result so to call this function that means to execute the all the statements that are written inside the function i need to write the function call this is the function call in which i have written the name of my function which is addition and then i have uh, specified the round brackets and since i did not pass any parameters in this place so this particular uh, set of round brackets will also be empty that is necessary okay if you pass any value here it will give an error because the function call should always match with a function definition right now coming to the second function in which we are doing the same task but we are now using the return statement so what is happening here again we have used the def keyword we have named our function add underscore numbers and again 
there are no parameters so uh, we are performing the same uh, three statements the first three statements are same that are performing the same task of inputting two numbers from the user and then calculating the result but the final result instead of getting printed it is being returned now what will this return statement do the return statement basically returns the value or values that are written in front of it in this case the variable result will be returned to the point from where the function was called so in this case if we write this as the function call add underscore numbers then the return value is completely wasted because it is not stored anywhere however if we write the particular this particular statement as the function call statements what it basically means is that call this function add underscore numbers and then whatever value is returned by this particular function store that value in the variable val now once you have stored that value in the variable val you will uh, be able to use that value of using this variable in the remaining function okay so this was the second way of writing your uh, same function now the third and the last way in which we can write this function is by passing the two parameters instead of taking argument uh, the uh, two numbers as input from the user we have passed it as parameters and then after calculating the result we have not only printed the result we have also returned the result so how will be the function call of this particular uh, function the function call must have two particular uh, values that will be stored in the variables num1 and num2 if you do not write these values the interpreter will give an error because in that case your function call does not have any parameter but your function definition has a parameter okay so there would be no matching the python interpreter will not know which function to call because the function call is not matching the function header okay so that is why you need to specify two values the result variable will now store the value num1 plus num2 that means 5 plus 6 11 and this particular statement will print 11 and this last statement will return the value 11 to this particular variable which is va variable value here okay so that is how you write a user defined function and you call that function using the function call that's all for today's video let us know if you have any doubts or if you want to study any particular topic from the python programming language so till we meet in the next video mind your exam